Welcome to Mastering Your Financial Life, hosted by Judy Heft, the founder and CEO of Judith Heft and Associates Financial and Lifestyle Concierge. This year, they're celebrating 26 years in business. In every episode, Judy interviews professionals who help others successfully manage their financial lives. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. Judy is the author of two books, How to Be Smart, Successful, and Organized with Your Money, For a Better Today and Tomorrow, and her latest book, Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles, How to Successfully Manage Money in Every Decade of Life. You can read chapters of her books and catch prior episodes of this show at www.juditheft.com. Now here's the host of Mastering Your Financial Life, Judy Heft. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Mastering Your Financial Life. I'm Judy Heft, Financial and Lifestyle Concierge, CEO of Judith Heft and Associates, and we're celebrating 27 years in business this year. And today I am pleased to introduce you to Xavier Letterer. Xavier is the owner of Ambrose Growth Business Coaching. And what he does is he's a great business coach because he really helps CEOs and founders get unstuck and then he helps them to improve their growth and their profit and their bottom line. And he helps with accountability, which is so important, and focus. And he helps his clients to develop leadership skills. So I'm really thrilled to have you here today, Javier, to help us and give some tips to our listeners. So welcome. Thank you very much for having me and happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, one some of the things we were talking about were, you know, like, you try to encourage, or you do encourage, I shouldn't say the word try, you encourage your uh, clients to lead from a place of love, not a place of fear. And I love that because I think, you know, when you lead from a place of love, you're just showing your people that you're with them, that you, you know, you believe in them. And it, it's not easy to be a leader. It's a lot easier, I think, in some ways to be an employee. So, you know, how do you talk about that with your people? Yes, indeed. It is not easy to be a leader. Being a leader is uh, dealing with a lot of contradictions. Um, and it's, it's really tough to, to find out when, when, you should be, uh, when you should be tough, when you should be vulnerable, when you should be open, when you should be determined. Um, and, um, you know, I think um, um, you, jumping on what you just said, you know, lead, leading with, with, with a place of love, from a place of love and, and another place of, of, of fear, um, I, I think there are three things that each company, each leader has to um, um, to work on in order to grow their business. The first one is um, um, to uh, to take care of themselves. The second, the second one is to take care of their team to help them grow. And the third one, um, and the third one, the third aspect is to take care of their company to set up smart strategies and smart systems to to um, to, to hold people accountable. Now I started with taking care of yourself because it's exactly what you know, it's exactly what you what you mentioned. You know, um, we 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 have a number of fears, um, and very often when we don't realize these fears, um, they um, they they trunk our behaviors, which has uh, we, which have negative impacts on the people around us. So, for instance, um, one of the main one of the main roadblocks that I see with people is. Um, Lack of delegation. Lack of what? Lack of delegation. delegation. Many founders, many founders struggle to um, to to delegate more to their team, and um, and you know when I have a conversation with them about hey what's happening, they tell me you know um, I've tried delegating in the past and it hasn't worked very much and and you know I, um, I I'm done with delegating. Clearly, it doesn't work. Um, and then, um, and then I realized, and, and then we realized in the conversation that two things are happening. Number one, um, they say that they delegate, but in fact, they have abdicated. They have delegated without putting a system in place to, um, to, to help the person, uh, who receives the task, the task, do, 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 uh, uh, do, the, do their job. So that that's one Thing you know, like, like a lack of accountability system or lack of delegation system. The second thing, coming back to fears, is that um, 
they they have a number of fears in their in in their minds that are reinforced by you know the the first time that the person that delegated us to kind of starts failing they, they they feel scream in their head saying hey i told you this was a bad idea to delegate and and and, and now and here's the the evidence one of these fears uh it's not the only one but one of them that i that i, that I see often is um ceos who are control freaks they want to make sure that things happen the way they want things to happen um for instance because um they are perfectionists i have good looks like um, and i want my team to do it exactly the way the, the, um, the, um, the way i want um and as long as that fear is screaming in their heads they you know, they, they are not going to, they are not going to delegate and they're going to run the number one roadblock in the company which will remain at the current level will not grow much uh, much faster in the future so i think xavier just you know one of the things that triggered for me when you were talking was delegating and i think that sometimes in the beginning and i don't do that now as much but in the beginning when i was starting to delegate to my team members so i'd have more time to do what i want to do sometimes it's easier you think to yourself it's just so much easier if i just do this myself you know but it's better I've learned over the years, it's better to take the time and explain it once carefully. And that way, you know, the person you're delegating it to will understand. But I think that's part of the fear around it too, is the time. It's just like, let me just do this instead of explaining it to someone. Do you come across that a lot? Yeah, it's better if you do it yourself and it is faster if you do it yourself. So you know, why wouldn't you do it? Um, and, and, and there are two reasons why, 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 just like you said, you know, it's, it's not a good strategy. The first one is if you don't know it yourself, you can focus your time on much more valuable things to help you, you, you come grow faster in, in the future. But also, if you do the, the, these things yourself, there is a, you know, the, the short term, in the short term, there's a gain. The thing, the thing gets done like you want it to, to be done really relatively fast. But there's a long term pain. Which is you steal, you deprive your 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 team member from development opportunities, mm. um, and 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 the cost of that is um, at some you know the, the the brain is going to shrink. I mean not physically, but you know you you get less of the le, less of their intelligence, and at some point, especially if they are good and smart, they might leave. Um, and that is when, um, when 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 founders come and say, "Hey, uh, I've just lost my, my 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 top top team member. I don't know what to do." Well, yes, you lost this, this person because two years ago you you decided not to delegate, and that is um, and that is the issue. Um, and and so so you're 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 absolutely right. It is um, the natural way of doing things is doing things. Um, ourselves because that's what we that's what we've been we've been doing since the beginning of the company you know it, it works and, and and why change things so growing a business is actually pretty painful for 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 the ceo and especially for founders because it means um developing new habits um and 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 and, and change is, is is change is always difficult especially when it comes about change of of personal habits it's true, but change is hard. People are afraid of change, even though they think it's going to be easier or better. It's just, what's that fear, the uh, an acronym for, you know, forget everything and run. I mean, there's another way of saying it, but I won't say it on the podcast, but that's kind of what it is. And, you know, that's what fear is just like, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm going to go away. And for me, I think, you know, when I, the way I handled the growth of my business was having an accountability partner that I spoke to every morning. I think that's great. You mentioned it earlier too. Accountability is key for some people like me, where I just, I need that with everything. You know, I just need to, can't just, I don't have the willpower, I guess. And maybe that's what it is, but uh, you know. Um, I, and I think that is a great strategy. Um, and I don't think it's a question of willpower, to be honest with you. I think um, one of the um, one of the, the key ingredients of change is to to set up the right structure, um, and um, and part of that structure can be hey um, I'm going to um, to build some repetition in what I do you know do things every 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 day or every week and put it in my calendar to um, 
because it takes it takes some time because some be, before something become, becomes a new habit. But something else is, is, is just to have somebody play the role of an accountability partner. So ask somebody to help us build that structure. And often these accountability partners don't need to, to do much. Um, just the fact that you have that person forces you to, I guess, to prepare that conversation, um, which uh, at the beginning, I, I assume, was, 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 was difficult because it's new and uh, I don't have time for this, all that kind of things. But then it became a habit. And now I assume that these conversations are much easier for you to prepare. Uh, do, do you still have your accountability partner? Pardon me? Do you still have your accountability partner? I do, partner? I do. We don't That's speak good. every day anymore, but we do speak a couple of times a week. And it's helpful, you know, to remind each other, you know, I, I need to, well, it's really kind of accountability for the things that I don't like to do, I think, more or less, because I need to be reminded and pushed and encouraged is better than pushed, but encouraged. So, yeah, it's helpful to have someone like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is that is a great strategy. And it does take, uh, it does take courage to admit that... Um, that we're not perfect and that we need help um, to, um, um, to do the things that, um, that, we, um, that, we don't want to, uh, that we don't want to do, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because as you come up the ranks and you know, become a, a, a leader or an entrepreneur and you're even in your own business or working for someone else, your roles and responsibilities change. And so you need to learn how to adapt and just to be able to figure that out. And yeah. be honest with yourself. And it's, that's another good place to have an accountability partner, too. Yeah, absolutely. What, what I notice is the, the higher people in an organization, um, the more people lie to them. Um, and, and, and the less honest feedback they receive. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as a result, it's very difficult to realize when, when, when you're the CEO of an organization what you, what you don't do really well and what you should do um, differently, you receive superficial feedback, but not fundamental feedback about um, about the flaws in your behavior, or sometimes in your personality. You in, know, in, in terms of how you um, how, uh, how you deal with your business, um, and, um, and 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 the first quality of an accountability partner, in my opinion, is you know to to hold you accountable. But the second quality of a good accountability partner is to to hold that mirror in front of you, somebody, you know, a truth teller, somebody who will tell you with a lot of love and respect, but who will tell you the, the, the naked, the naked, hurtful truth um, so that, you know, you, 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 know, you know what to work on to um, to uh, to improve yourself. And the faster you improve, the faster your company will, 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 will grow. The, the golden rule is no company can grow faster in the long run. And the pace of personal development of its leader. Mm, that's a good, that's an interesting quote. So let's take a little break here and then we'll come back and we're, we're here with Xavier Letterer and we'll talk some more. Hey there. I just want to tell you a little bit about my new book that just came out called Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles. And here it is. It's how to successfully manage your money in every decade of life. I co-authored this with my CFO, Liz Levy, and together we created this manual that's going to help you through every stage of life. We talk about having a baby. We talk about young adulthood, pre-retirement, what to do when you're at that age of retirement. If you're contemplating divorce, do you need an estate plan? We cover all of these, each subject in a different chapter. And I really think that you're going to find this so helpful because at the end of every chapter, we have checklists that you can look at and you can use and they can be a guide for you. So this is a wonderful manual that we've created. It's available on Amazon. You can also find it on our website at judithhef.com slash book. And we're here for you. If you need anything, reach out. I hope you enjoy the book. Here's another picture of it, just so you know what's going on. Here it is. And I'm really proud of it. It's my second book. And I'd love to have you uh, read it and give me your feedback. Judy Heft, judithheft.com, financial and lifestyle concierge, celebrating 26 years in business. And over the years, I've learned so much. And what I've been trying to do is impart a little bit of this knowledge to you so I can help all of you become as financially organized as I am. 
And we're back. We're back here with Xavier Letterer, Ambrose Growth Business Coaching. So one of the things that you said in the beginning was uh, about self-care as a leader. That's so important. And, you know, uh, so how do you encourage your CEOs and clients to take care of themselves? Because I think sometimes we put ourselves last, you know, because there's so much going on, especially to people that have families also, you're not only running a business, but you're trying to take care of your family. So how do you encourage that? What are your suggestions for that? You're absolutely right. Um, uh, the, the, the mentality is very often uh, leaders eat last. Um, and, um, and and we, we tend to be, um, we tend to not take care of, uh, of ourselves enough. But the, um, the, the cost of, of, of not taking care of ourselves is that we, um, um, we don't take care of others very well. The, the, the rule is you, you cannot take care of, of, of others um, um, uh, as long as you don't as you don't take care of yourself. It's, it's a bit the mentality of put your oxygen mask first, just like on an airplane. The cost of not taking care of yourself is a number of things, but among others, that you as a leader don't make very good decisions if you don't take care of yourself. Um, um, you know, the... Um, the thing is, you know, especially when it comes to, to mental wellness, which is the, the, the big cost of not taking care of, your, or, um, of, of yourself, as soon as your, 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 your brain gets into overdrive because you, you, you spend too much energy fighting for your business, fighting for your people, fighting to make payroll um, um, eh, um, every other week, um, as soon, uh, you know, when you go too, when you go too far in, 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 into your... your um, um, your, your energy tank, um, your, your, your brain ends up in, uh, in an area of negative energy. And when you are in that, in, 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 in that area, your brain is into a kind of a flight of flea um, mentality where each, um, anything that happens is perceived as, 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 as a danger. Um, and, 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 and that, creates, that creates a tunnel vision which means that um, every danger is just as important as, 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 as the next one. And you, you have a, ten, a natural tendency to jump to the first conclusion to solve that danger, to solve that problem. Instead of keeping an open mind to, 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 um, to, to identify multiple options to, to, um, to, to solve your problems. So not taking care of yourself um, um, kind of makes you makes you less smart and less good at, at uh, uncovering options and at, at making good uh, good decisions. So um, the alternative to that is to do what um, what um, professional athletes do. Professional athletes need to to tap into um, their energy at very specific points at a very high level. When they have a game, they need to be at the top of their game, at people at peak performance. And the way they do that is by alternating periods of high energy with periods of low energy, of rest. And resting is actually part of their job. And it has always struck me that top athletes were paid millions of dollars to work just a few hours a day. You know, they, they, they train just a few hours a, bit a day. But I didn't realize that resting is part of their professional life. The same is true with, um, with you as a CEO or with any founder. Resting and taking care of ourselves is part of our duty. I think it's so um, important to disconnect. Yes, that's true. I agree with that. When we go on vacation, we have to disconnect. I mean, it's we just can't be constantly on. Yeah. We yeah. Re 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 train our brains to relax. Yeah. yeah. And, and how many CEOs do... Do, do we know Judy who who think that going on vacation is kind of um, who, who go on vacation with a sense of guilt? I should be at work, yes. you know, doing some work, and 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 when they, they, and then they go on vacation and check email every day because you, who knows a client might might, might contact them. Right. Um, but that, it, it actually this it's actually a disservice to 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 the company, to the client, and and and, and to their team. I agree 100% with that, Xavier. That's so true. So this has been really helpful and really informative. I'm really glad that we had a chance to talk today. So how can our listeners find you? Are there anything, you know, you have, I see you have a CEO book club. Tell us a little about that, how that works and the workshops. So um, um, every other month we have a CEO book club. 
Um, one of the books we, we read recently actually was uh, Your Oxygen Mask First, so <laughs> very, um, very on topic. Um, and um, it is a chance for CEOs to, to, to read a specific book and to discuss it with other CEOs. And what, what these CEOs tell me is two things. Number one, they love it because it forces them to read books. They know they should read more, but they don't know what to read. And, you know, they don't have a deadline. They don't have an accountability partner. So it, it holds them accountable. And secondly, we all have a different way of reading books um, and having a conversation with other CEOs of uh, small and mid-market companies um, makes them smarter on how to interpret the, um, the book. What we also have is um, in the in-between months is um, our CEO workshops, where every time we, um, we, um, we, we discuss a separate topic in a very interactive and, uh, and down-to-earth way, in, in such a way that, that, that you get something um, at the end of the, the, the workshop. You have, you have something to work on. And the topics vary from uh, how to build a, a culture of accountability to uh, how to define your core values, or how to, um, how, to, how to identify your blind spots as a leader. Um, the best way to find out about these, um, these, th these different workshops and, and book clubs is to sign up for my weekly newsletter. Um, you can go to my website, ambrosegrowth.com um, and um, sign up for the newsletter on, uh, at the bottom of the, uh, the homepage. That's great. And how can they contact you if they wanna reach out to you with questions? They find you on LinkedIn? They can definitely find me on LinkedIn or they can send me an email. My email address is xavier at ambrosegrowth.com. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Xavier. I was just going to call you Ambrose. <laughs> Xavier, it was really great to talk to you today. I hope our listeners learned something. I certainly did. It's good to be reminded of accountability and taking care of myself as an entrepreneur. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Judy. You've been listening to Mastering Your Financial Life, hosted by Judy Heft. Thank you for your positive reviews, comments, and sharing this show with others. You can read chapters of Judy's books and catch prior episodes of Mastering Your Financial Life at www.judytheft.com.